All right, welcome to a new session of uh, intelligence and learning tutorial compilation thing. So this session is going to be a series of videos and I'm going to build a classifier. So what do I mean by build a classifier? Now I've done this before. I have some video tutorials where I did a doodle classifier and this is somewhat similar and I'm also going to redo the doodle classifier with a convolutional neural network. That's coming. But here what I want to start with is a very baseline of just doing classification. Now, in order for me to do a classification example, the full story from training, testing, to deployment of a machine learning model to classify some data, I need to first think about data. Now, what I'm going to do in this uh, series is use a trivial data set. A, a data set that really doesn't have much of a point of view, that's not particularly meaningful. I just want to show you the full story of how all the pieces work together. Um, when I kind of get to the end of this series, I'll talk to you a bit more of what, where you might find your own data sets, how you might collect your own data, and sort of think about where you might take this. But, you know, I can't emphasize enough that the data, the data that you're using and the data that you're not using <laughs> is the primary most fundamental piece of all of this. If you, uh, you know, if you just want to try out the algorithm, what I'm doing is just fine. But if you actually want to build something that classifies something in the real world, there are a lot of questions you should ask yourself, starting from the very first one is, should you be doing this in the first place? Like, is what you're doing good or is it causing harm? Wh who's being left out in the data? There's lots of really important, critical questions you want to think about. So putting that aside, we'll come back to it at the end, the data set that I'm going to use, I'm just going to make a color data set. So and I'm going to crowdsource this from you, the viewer. <laughs> By the time you're watching this, I might have already finished all the crowdsourcing, but there'll be links in this video's description to where you can find the various elements. So I'm going to create uh, essentially a spreadsheet. It's going to have four columns, red, green, blue, and then label. So each record, each rec data point is going to have three values, like 25500, 0, 0, and its label is going to be something like, you know, red-ish. <laughs> then I might have 0, 255, 0, and its label would be green-ish. So I'm, again, this is what I mean by totally trivial. I am labeling colors into a certain number of buckets, reddish, greenish, yellowish, bluish, purplish, orangish, grayish, brownish, something like that. Um, and, and I'm going to have this massive data set, uh, it won't be that big, but a big data set, and it's going to learn from this labeled data how to take a new color, right? There are millions of possible colors, 256 to the third power, and automatically label it according to what human beings generally think of those colors in those certain categories. So this is what I'm going to build. So this first part of the video series is just about me figuring out how to collect this data. And so the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to make a P5 sketch that shows a random color and gives you a little drop down menu or a multiple choice thing to like pick which category and hit submit and it gets saved in a Google Sheet. And that Google Sheet will be this spreadsheet that then I will then use later to load and feed into TensorFlow.js to train a model to learn to classify RGB colors according to some set of labels. Now I want to mention that this, uh, this idea comes from uh, some work that Hannah Davis is doing here researching at ITP around uh, data and crowdsourcing data. She is actually making a data set um, around landscapes and tagging those landscapes with sort of what you might expect, field, ocean, <laughs> whatever tags you might expect in the land, but also thinking about could you have emotional landscapes? Could you have a data set of landscapes? These are landscapes that sort of, uh, that, that um, embody the concept of fear or happiness or joy. So that might be something you start to think about. What a kind of creative labels could you apply, fixed set of labels to colors? There's interesting possibilities there. So you might make your own creative version of this, but I'm gonna start with something very trivial and exactly um, as sort of written out here. Okay. So let's go back and I've um, got a, a P5 sketch here that I started with nothing in it. Um, and I want to add, um, so the first thing I want to do is just pick a random color. It's going to be like the simplest thing ever. <laughs> so I'm going to, and by the way, 
a pro, I could use a Google form. Um, I could use uh, something, a service that, uh, that I can pay people to label data like Mechanical Turk or Crowdflower. Maybe I'll try to look at some of those in another video. But right here, I'm going to sort of custom build my own thing. Um, and so I am, what do I need to do? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pick a, a random, a random red value between 0 and 255. Uh, then I am going to, and I'm, I want to floor it because I kind of don't want to deal with floating point numbers. There's not really a reason for me to do that. And then I want to, um, then I want to show it. So I'm going to say background R RGB. And then I am going to, what do I want to do now? I'm going to say uh, drop down equals create select. And then I can add options to the drop down like this. Let's just see if this works. Whoops. Blue ish, red ish, green ish. Okay, so let's just see what this looks like. So now if I go to the browser and look at this sketch, and we can see here, I've got my drop down and Every time I refresh the page, I see a new color. And then I can add also uh, submit equals create button, submit, and uh, submit dot mouse pressed, uh, submit, you know, send data. And then I can write a function called send data where I I'm going to send this data to something, okay? So this is the basic idea. Um, we don't need this to be so big. Uh, there we go. So this is what I want. Each time I refresh this page, I'm going to pick a label and I'm going to hit submit and it'll hopefully do this, put that data somewhere. Where is it going to go? I want it to go to this spreadsheet. So I want to see the R, G, B, and values and the label end up in this spreadsheet. Then I'm going to turn it over to you all and I'm going to get lots of, uh, lots of, lots of data that I can then use for training the model. Okay, so I need to put this data somewhere. I'm actually going to do that in the next part and do that in a separate part. Um, I am going to use a, a service called Firebase, um, which I have a whole set of tutorials about. So if you want to learn a lot more about Firebase, I'll link to those tutorials in this video's description, but I'm just going to kind of jump right in and quickly like, uh, you know, make a Firebase project and send all my data there from this P5 sketch. So, but before I go, <laughs> um, a great, great point was made in the chat that this is uh, a particularly, um, whoops, where am I? This is a particularly awkward interface, especially if I only get to do one. <laughs> I probably should make this that I could like do like five colors all at once, but let's say I only get to do one. It's going to be really annoying to have to use this drop down. So one thing I could do is do create a radio um, and then uh, I'll just rename this. Um, and in P5, this is a P5 uh, DOM creation function that I believe should change this to this. And you know, again, the layout here is a little bit awkward. Um, I will <laughs> think about fixing that up, but um, now we can see here the idea here. I'm gonna pick blue and hit submit. I'm gonna pick uh, reddish, bluish, and hit submit. Okay, so I just need to and take this function send data and send the data to Firebase. And that's what I'm going to do in the next video, okay? So in the next video, I'm going to send the data to Firebase. I'm going to then upload this somewhere and let those of you who are watching this live uh, give me some data, okay? See you soon.